It's June, it's Trinity Sunday, it's Pride Month, and here we are. Time to worship together, to bring our prayers, to bring our lament, to bring our sense of being connected. Despite everything, we are connected because of the love of God. Welcome to this time of worship. I'm the Reverend Dr. Catherine Faith McLean, and we're here at St. Paul's United Church in Edmonton, Canada. You're going to see Tyson Kerr and Susan Farrell, our musicians. The scriptures are Psalm 8 and 2 Corinthians 13, verses 12 and 13. We're glad you're here. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall arise to Trinity. Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee, casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea. Cherubim and seraphim falling down Holy, 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 
O God, God of all, how splendid is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above and around us. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O God, God of all, how splendid is your name in all the earth. A remarkable thing that is true about the life of faith that is not true in the same way about secular living is that the fundamental faith-based, faith-rooted, grounded in faith way that we are intrinsically connected to each other. St. Paul says that when one part of the body suffers, the rest of the body suffers. We know this is true, isn't it? That when part, one part of us is not functioning well or is in pain, the rest of our body responds in some way. And we know that this is true in faithful community. It is true in wider community, but in the Christian community, it is fundamentally essential. That sense of being connected to one another is what the Trinity is all about that God, the Creator and Provider, the Christ and the Spirit is intricately connected, fully connected, flowing back and forth, sort of as a dance, as dancers move back and forth. And that is the root of our Christian faith, that relationship. So the sense that we have of being connected in relationship through joy, through ordinary living, through growth, through death, through pain, is part of our essential, fundamental connection to one another as Christian people. That's the Trinitarian basis of the Christian faith. And it's why, for instance, our church building remains closed. It's why I'm here in the lilacs with the sunshine in a midweek afternoon, offering you a reflection rather than inviting you to join me and the choir and everyone else in the church building because we are fundamentally connected to one another. We are responsible for one another. And when we are together in the church again, it will be because we can all be safe there together. We have a responsibility to one another and to the earth. Listen to this. This is from Psalm 8, which you heard a moment ago. O oh God, you have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. Who are we as mortals? We are those who have responsibility for care, for connection, for respect, for dignity, not for misuse and hurt, 
but for care, the responsibility that comes with relationship. Tens of thousands of people of conscience, tens of thousands of people of conscience are gathering in cities across North America and around the globe. We are insisting that we live up to the values, the values that we invest in one another as persons, as people. And we are holding space for the memorial services that will happen in the next week for George Floyd. Sometimes I feel like a mother's child. Sometimes I feel like a mother's child. Sometimes I feel like a mother's child. Black lives always matter. We join our voices in the voices who are proclaiming around the globe, Black Lives Matter. And we act in friendship and in faith. In faith because of this intrinsic connection, this responsibility, and this connection that we have in relationships as people, as sisters and brothers and siblings as human beings. And so we, we offer ourselves in, in friendship and in the ways that we can. Some of us offer ourselves as shields. Some of us ask, offer ourselves as silent witnesses so that the voices who are heard are not the white dominant voices but the voices whom the rest of us need to hear from and learn from. We are all, all in this together. And it's, it's Pride Month, and Pride Parades began as the Stonewall Riots. Martha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera were trans women whose names are celebrated now, spoken with respect and joy and dignity as those who started this worldwide parade of joy and celebration and also liberation and resistance, recognizing that we are all part of this together. And as Christians, 
as members of the United Church of Canada, as those who hold a faith in the God who is always about relationship. We are present in that. We are present. You see, living in faith is sort of living in a hunger for relationship and understanding that we are in this together and that relationships run deep and relationships need to be about growth and learning and forgiveness and change and development and truth and dignity and integrity and authenticity about the reality of who we are. As children of God, we say as Christians, as human beings, we say, as members who stand beside other faithful people in other traditions who are holding relationships in the light of love. This is the challenging ethic of love that Jesus brings us in the Christian faith. Jesus, who walked this earth and breathed this breath, who loved, who understood the human body, who was a human body, and who suffered. The ethic of love that we have from Jesus is what binds us together in this ongoing, growing numbers of relationships in our neighborhoods, in our families, across the cities where people are gathering, across the small towns where people bring their presence to say, we care, black lives matter, we are celebrating with pride, we love our neighbors and friends. This ethic of love is not easy. It takes courage, it's risky, and it's wonderful. So deeply, deeply full of joy. We use words such as partnership and solidarity, community, as we quest for a right relationship with one another. And right relationship is the phrase that we use when we are learning to be better as partners in our treaties, Treaty 6, where I am, and in the treaties across our country, and in the unceded lands and around our globe. This yearning for relationship, this hunger for relationship, this action toward deeper, more authentic relationship comes out of our understanding of God, the Creator and Provider, the Christ, the Holy Spirit, who always move together and here's another thing. Here's the thing that I want to leave you with before I close. When we suffer, God suffers. Jesus suffered on the cross, and the whole of God suffered. Not just Jesus the Son. It's not like God the Father, God the Creator and Provider, was sitting out somewhere watching. God suffered. All of God, the Holy Spirit, suffered. And we are bound together in our suffering as well. St. Paul spoke of the parts of the body. When one part suffers, the whole body suffers. When part of our population suffers, we all suffer. We are all diminished. We are all put down. We none of us are the noble and dignified children of God whom we know we are intended to be. When one of us suffers, when we suffer, we all suffer and God suffers. And that also means, of course, that we do not suffer alone. When we suffer, God is with us. When we suffer, others are aware, are paying attention. And so we pray. God, cherish our tears. We know your heart aches with ours at the hurts we feel. We know your heart aches with ours in the hurts we inflict. Surround us with compassion. Strengthen us with courage. Remind us 
tell us, reassure us that we are not alone. We live in God's world. Thanks be to God. Amen. I am sorry. I got Marsha P. Johnson's name wrong. The Stonewall riots were the beginning of pride parades. And that was through the effort, the witness and the long standing respect we have for the work of Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera. And we pray. Holy God, we bring you prayers for the beauty of this earth, for the wonder of this planet, for the movement of the wind and the waters, the clouds, the growth of the grass and the gardens, the blooming of the lilacs, the colors that are coming up through the ground, the great diversity on the earth in which we make our home, God, we bring our prayers for those who would be going through doors today, who wish for a place of welcome and entrance, who look for a home, a spiritual home, a place to rest, to be loved, to be supported, to be encouraged, to be cherished, a place to breathe, a place to be active, a place to live. Holy One, we bring you our prayers for one another. Human creatures who make our lives on this earth, who work and live and love and in many times are frightened and often with good reason. For sisters and brothers and siblings, Holy One, who are frightened, we bring our prayers. We ask to be re your reassurance presence, reassuring presence of peace and respect and dignity and love. We ask that we may cherish your children. In this month of pride, we bring our prayers especially for those who would be loved to be coming in the doors or out the doors and exclaiming, this is who I am. We bring our prayers and we join the dance we are happy to be together. And Holy One, in this time of Black Lives Matter, we bring our lament, we bring our engagement, we bring the depths of who we are for examination and for action. And Holy One, we ask your blessing, for you live and move among us, you take delight in the way we dance, the way we love each other, the way we are your presence with one another. Holy One, we bring you this prayer and we listen for the words Jesus taught. Amen.
Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be a song, no one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle wide. Guard the still point of the circle, round to all creation turns. Nothing lost but held forever in God's gracious arms. Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be our song, no one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle wide. Let our hearts touch far horizons, so encompass great and small. Let our loving know no borders, faithful to God's call. Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be our song, no one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle wide. Let the dreams we dream be larger than we've ever dreamed before. Let the dream of Christ be in us, open every door. Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be our song, no one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle wide, draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be our song, no one stands alone, standing side by side, draw the circle wide. As St. Paul said to the people in Corinth, I say to you, all the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.